why does he seem nervous? Um, I read an article in the Washington Post about the Baltimore Diocese, Diocese of Baltimore, and how they're closing churches and consolidating parishes and how they've got a whole new plan that the people have to uh, get used to. And I know my church is, is eight minutes from me. If I had to drive from here to my old church, my childhood church, say in Bethesda, because St. Peter's closed, St. Jude's closed, St. Catherine's closed, and the next closest would be my church all the way there, I wouldn't be happy. I'd have to conform. I'd have to... Um, I'd have to... I have to go to church. You have to go to church. We need the sacraments. So I'd have to find... Wait, don't pull me through here. I'd have to find a way to adapt to that. Um, they've got... I believe it said 59 parishes or 59 churches in Baltimore and they were going to knock that down to 23. Here's the thing that and this reminds me of something that I that I heard at a conference last week. Wow, that needs to be worked on. That's not going to attract any frogs. It's supposed to be a frog pond, a makeshift frog pond. Um what, what what bothers me about that, not only... No, we can't walk in the garden, dog. Come on. Not only the... It's the closings of the churches themselves, the church. For me, one thing that I think about in all of that is that we go to... Went to a parish, a couple of church, uh, parishes in Philly, Philadelphia, to... Uh, go and um, do a camp in the summer for a week. Uh, we haven't done it the last couple years because of the pandemic and other things. Anyway, the churches were made like 1898 or, or 1901. And of course, they're absolutely beautiful. They're made out of stone. At least the, the building itself should last forever. Even if, you know, there's going to be constant maintenance of something that's 120 years old. Um, but they're beautiful. They've got stained glass. They've got beautiful. The church is, is made to honor God and to get, put people in the frame of mind of thinking of the saints and Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit and God. And so I, I know that there is a rub that some of our churches made now. I guess they can't afford it are made more to get the job done rather than to be pretty. At least not pretty in my eyes. Maybe if you're a modern art, abstract art. But anyway, what, what, what bothers me is that these are churches with history. These are holy places where, where sacraments, where Jesus has been called down by where the whole where the priest is called down to consecrate the Eucharist. So these are buildings where Jesus has been because we know, we believe that uh, the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in a, obviously a mysterious uh, type of way. We can understand it, but we won't obviously understand it fully here on this side of of heaven until we get to heaven where we fully understand. But, um, yeah, these churches, particularly the ones that are older, are, 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 do I want to say relics? Well, they touch, Jesus touched the altar and the altar touched the building so does that make it, what does that make it, a third class relic, a, a relic? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, what happens to these buildings is one thing I'm thinking of. Here's a, here's a beautiful church that people should be allowed to come in and pray and, and know that God is here, or at least, even if, even if they close it, I know you can't just keep the parish open. 
I mean, the church opens, someone's got to pay for that. But it seems terrible that these churches that were built 100, 150 years ago with the money of the people of the, of the city or the place are now being, I don't know what, sold, turned into secular buildings, torn down. This, if we really believe that this, that this was, that Jesus was there on the altar in those buildings, would we even, how could we sell it? I don't know. Uh, 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 you, you see what I'm saying? You see where I'm getting at here? Uh, it just seems, that seems like really a shame that those beautiful buildings that you could just come in and sit and, and know that God is here when the candles lit and the Euc- and the uh, Eucharist consecrated host is in the tabernacle and you know you're in the presence of God. So it seems, it seems really a shame. And uh, that's what struck me that... Uh, and it was funny because we were at a conference and a lady was explaining that the groups of people the, uh, of the church, you have the whites, the Caucasians, whatever. And when we think of the church, we think of the building. It's important to us, which I think I'm, I'm sort of saying here. But the Latinos supposedly think of the priest. When they think of church, they think of the priest. And then the... African and Asia, uh, Pan-Asian communities think of community, I believe she said. I think of all three, but yeah, I, I do look, having been in some beautiful churches, and I just think how, how awesome it is. I love anything old. So I love an old house too, a house built in 1910 or something would be so cool to think that people were living in there during the first war, the second war. Um, People were probably born and died in those houses. I just find that interesting. I'd rather live in a 1910 house that was well preserved than a a mansion of, what do you call it, a mansion. So anyway, that was just some thoughts about this closing in the Diocese of Baltimore and how Sad. That's the oldest. That's the oldest. Isn't that the oldest diocese? The first diocese in the United States. So if you got 59 churches and they're taking out 36 of them, some of those are super old and have had a whole lot of of uh, sacraments and graces through them. So let's ask the saints to pray for us. Let's pray for our diocese. Let's pray for our country. If we would turn back into the Catholic, original Christian church that we were, these churches wouldn't be closing. We would have so many people that we could actually build beautiful churches again and maintain the churches we have. And our pews would be filled like they were when I was a kid. You used to have to sit side by side on the steps going up to the alt- up to the altar, up to the choir. The, the vestibule was standing room only. Now, the church is, is just, when you go to Mass, it's just not full. So, let's pray for the souls in purgatory. And pray for the church in, in the Americas and renew the earth and renew the face of the earth.